is an in progress Sony Trinitron model KV9200 I'm seeing um, online date codes of 1975 1976 it, it that's it's probably 1975 but the speaker in here, I guess it has a date code of 1974, but that, you know, that's just the speaker, not the TV. <laughs> but, so let's just say it's a 1975 set. I know it's hard to tell, especially, this this camera does not like uh, shadow masks or aperture grills. I just had to do degaussing on it. I used that, my bulk tape eraser had a blotch here and a blotch here, and that fixed it. I thought I had to do purity, nope. It works just fine. Uh, let's see. The green is really green on this. I love it. It's probably not even coming through on camera. Let me see if I can focus in on it. And, uh, all right. And we'll do, oops, uh, blue. really blue magenta white um, yellow two plus two is four cyan uh, the yoke might be sitting crooked and we got some pin cushion stuff that needs addressed Everything appears to be working as it should. Convergence isn't too bad. Uh, background definitely needs adjusted. It's reddish. Color bars look fantastic. Yeah, it's sort of auto-correcting, but this is red. I actually have it on UHF-14. I'm waiting for eighth inch to f-type connector that's how the vhf uh input is on this set uh original antenna was completely busted off so i had to remove that this tv was a little beat up but i just got done cleaning it up and testing it out now all the pilot lamps look good it looks like um i forget the picture of this uh you have your contrast control. It looks like it does have instant on that you pull out. But, of course, it's pushed in. But it appears to be nice and bright still. But it's actually on UHF-14. That's the only thing I can find wrong with this set. Um, is there's a, there's a busted gear in there. Not for the tuner itself. The tuner works beautifully, as you can see here. But uh, it does not turn the, the channel number. It's stuck on 21. There's the gear right there, broken in half. So when I got this, it was absolutely filthy, covered in black, greasy dirt. The outside was horribly scuffed up. Um, so I did it. I took the chassis out and the entire thing went in the parts washer because well daddy bear puts it in the dishwasher and it comes out looking like brand new now this is what i mean okay this is full of those stupid purple matchusta caps and they're all looking bad but this is a perfect example where esr is good but the uh, capacitance is bad so you can't always go buy an esr meter esr value alone when checking it what's this a 330 microfarad only reading 118.4 yeah now this is another cap I pulled off where the you can tell it's gonna be bad when the outside um, label has shrunk on it it's a one microfarad open circuit now, as you saw when I started this video, the TV did work. And even after making adjustments, it still worked acceptably. But I noticed when he had turned up the brightness, the user brightness, or changed channel, there was vertical foldover up here. Or it looked like it wasn't blanking, one of the two. And the, uh, the retrace lines were showing. 
So, yeah, you know, in typical fashion, you didn't check these. I mean, just like that first one I showed, you could take an ESR meter to it and got a good value. It's hard to test capacitance in circ. You got to take them out. And you could use this TV and you would notice quickly after a little bit of use, it's going to start failing rather quickly. That's why you got to use your judgment when you do this stuff. And I noticed there's two camps of people with that with the capacitor thing you got the ones that change the caps and magically think it's going to work regardless of the problem or the other camp and I'm, i don't care I'm, I'm going full blast on this the some of the vintage tv collectors who refuse to change caps until something catastrophic happens and no i mean this is at that point where it needs a recap Especially these purple Matchustas and those gray um, Elna caps. They're terrible. Ooh, looks like the Nichicon failed. Look at it. It's so crusty. Yeah, it's 40% uh, or more out of tolerance. ESR is about double what it should be. 33 42.25 and it looks like garbage on the bottom 100 at 25 just slightly out of tolerance but you know it's not going to last much longer 2.2 2.5 that's it ooh ooh I was going to say, the, the cap value is good. ESR, no way. 4.7. 6.07. And always observe polarity when you take a cap out. And this is a good example. This silk screen, yeah, it was installed the other way. Negative going to the on the right side opposite what this says so it was a revision of some kind i guess or a mistake from the factory not a mistake i mean it was actually correct because obviously it didn't blow up but what i'm saying is it was probably a mistake in the original layout of this board and so yeah this is opposite i gotta put a new cap in the opposite way this is showing is what i'm getting at and this board is done 0 0.047 microfarad, 500 volt. Open circuit or low capacitance, but this usually picks up on that. You know, it's, it's still in the microfarad range. Solution, two 350 volt caps in series. Give us a rating of about 700 volts and a capacitance rating of 0.52 and that ESR would be high that's typical for that small of a cap and that voltage rating now this is also a way to make a homemade bipolar cap however you reverse it so uh, let's just say we'll make both you connect both negatives together and these will be the two positives right here and there you go you created a um, bipolar cap okay here it is after recapping the sweep circuits and it's already looking better just looking at snow um, the main problem is before I could tell something was wrong was on here here's the retrace lines and I know I didn't show it I'm working on like 10 different things now and I forget to record things sue me so uh, even, and as I said, I turned the uh, brightness control up, contrast all the way down, so all you're just turning up, you see the background, again, there's retrace lines. So yeah, there's definitely problems. We found a bunch of bad caps, but hey, you know, I don't have to worry about this again, probably till I'm in my 90s. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to have to readjust my screen setting now, because... Uh, it's in the middle now, and the background's completely lit up. 
So that did change. Okay, I just retouched everything up. Uh, I had to increase the vertical height just a little and tweak the horizontal centering control, which is now exactly in the center of its travel. So we obviously now we fixed a bunch of issues there. <coughs> yeah, now it's completely uniform. Before it wasn't. I got the contrast down a bit, but that looks really good. All right, we're back to recap this board. Uh, no show stoppers, but every single one was either at its tolerance or over by 30 or 40 percent. So, didn't really change performance, but I won't have to worry about them when they start failing in a few years when I start putting this back into use because that's what's going to happen if they're up against their tolerance they don't have much life left or most of them or half of them were over their tolerance I should say and the only other thing I did do yes I did change the main filter cap here's the original A section was good C section was way out of tolerance so eventually the C section is probably going to cause issues. I mean, it's end of life, basically. But the A section was fine, but don't have to worry about anything now. I'm going to use the original mounting point. Just like that. So now, I'm going to reassemble. And here it is. The completed set. Ah, before I get into everything, I'll recap. Ha uh ha. -huh everything I had done. Sweep circuits definitely needed a recap. We had uh, caps with their outer uh, label on them just shrinking. And obviously got hot. Uh, caps that were open. Uh, no shorted caps. ESR through the roof. Definitely needed a recap on the sweep. And that purple Matsusta cap on the neck board. On this side here with the uh, signals. Okay. Every cap in that thing, there weren't any what I would deem good. I mean, technically it would work, but they're all 20 to 40%, some were 50% or more. Here's my thing. With the 20 to 40% out of tolerance caps, okay, the circuits in this set were designed to work within that 20% tolerance. So when you get beyond that, like 20 to 40%, yeah, you could correct for it with some adjustments, and that's fine. However, uh, leave the TV sit for a few days or turn on a week later and everything you would have adjusted would have shifted and you have to keep adjusting it every time you turn the TV on. That's what I experienced on my 1975 Sears console TV. So, um, go over everything. Cosmetically, a little beat up on the front, but it works perfectly now. I say that because it does have a few issues that I'll get into. I am missing one of the knobs. No biggie, it's on the contrast control. So, from the front, got a speaker here, auto AFT, pilot lamp, UHF, VHF, power switch, and if you notice, it does not say Econo Quick right there. This is an older version of the same model that actually does have instant on. Defeatable with the switch on the front. That's what quick start pull on means. Right now I have it on just to demonstrate, but naturally I will not be using it. Now, on top is standard controls, hue, color, brightness, vertical, auto, AFT, a chrome-plated metal handle. Yeah, if you want why these TVs weigh a ton, it's because of the aperture grill. The aperture grills in these are very heavy. Even as small as nine inch, this TV weighs a good bit. And you come around to the back, another, like I said, not as in perfect, perfect cosmetic shape. Uh, the rod antenna that was on it was completely mangled. I just took it out. I'm not gonna look at that ugly thing there. I, if I get in, eventually find a replacement, I will. But this looks far better than leaving it in place. 
Now, the VHF in is a 3.5 millimeter jack. And oddly, the UHF is twin lead. This is where the antenna would have plugged in. When I got this, somebody hooked up a 300 ohm twin lead ballon with one lead connected to the antenna. That's gonna look like pure crap, full of snow and whatever else. I bought a 3.5 millimeter to F type connected. That's what you're supposed to do. Plug in, works perfectly. I see so many videos of people say how bad RF connections were. You know why they were bad? Because they never did them right. I mean, they either had loose connections using cheap, like Gemini branded RG59 cables. Um, I've seen one TV where they had like five or six matching transformers in a row for no reason. It was like, where I know twin lead to 75 back to 300 and they just like daisy chained it. I'm like, really? Really? <sighs> I mean, every TV I got with RF and I do it correctly, with, you know, this is RG6 cable, looks 100%. That's all I'm gonna say. That's just my thing. I, I have a lot of um, pet peeves and that's just one of them. It just annoys the shit out of me. Horizontal size, vertical linearity, vertical size. Over here, green, blue, and red background, which is just your bias controls. That is the screen control, as in G2. And uh, let me see, the focus is else. Oh, the focus in this has three fixed positions so there's no pot for it you have to pick the best it looks fine as is it's razor sharp uh and the horizontal static convergence is actually on a tripler in there which i adjust this thing here's the thing i do have some trinitrons that i did buy off a friend but i haven't used them much because they need work or the one I, is a 15 inch and I just have a, I, I like to go through my sets before I, you know, do anything. Um, and I will say, since this is the first one I made 100%, I am very, very impressed. Near perfect convergence, corner of the corner. The focus is razor sharp. Brightness, of course, yeah. So yeah, I'm definitely a Trinitron fan. Um, I just wish I had more sooner. But that said, the TVNS uh, deserves a Betamax. Another far superior format. But just to demonstrate, I have a tape I had recorded in 1999. And uh, this VCR is the SL2000. And I actually have two of these. All right, so here we go with the instant on, on. Oh, I think I got the black level down a little too low. Brightness, whatever you want to call it. This was recorded on my Sony Super Beta SL100 via the RF connector in the late 90s. Now the speaker in this is just a small speaker, and I'm going to show that later. Um, back up. There we go. TV sit for a little bit. Here's what it looks like under normal 
uh, without instant on turn on with the non econo quick picture tube. Oops, I stopped the tape. No problem. So yeah, it does take a little bit. I know on camera it looks like it's up, but no, it's still warming up. And they're starting to stabilize now. Yeah, this was recorded in 1999 on my SL100 via RF, because that's the only thing that VCR had. And this is in regards to Sony's famous two headphone jack TVs. One obviously mutes the TV speaker and the second leaves the TV speaker on. As demonstrate here. See the top one mutes it because of your headphones. The bottom one doesn't. Here's one thing everybody seems to overlook. This TV was back before VCRs were a commonplace item. I mean, 1975, as in this TV, this TV may be a 74, because uh, I see some 1974 dated components in it. But that said, uh, you know, VCRs weren't that common, so people would hook their tape recorders of whatever variety to their TV speaker line out. So here's what I'm gonna do. I have an attenuating cable. I, this is, I have vintage, proper vintage Sony tape recorders, but are waiting to be restored. Um, this is my 1989 cassette quarter TCM 818. Uh, and the thing that's weird is, this actually uses the exact same speaker as this TV here. This was a entry level unit. In fact, it doesn't even use Sony's own mechanism. It uses the full auto stop version of the Tenishin. But you gotta give Sony some credit. They did not boast their features like GPX does. Now this is more just a dictation type tape recorder in terms of quality. But I'm using an attenuating cable into the microphone in jack just for demonstration here. And I'll hit record and adjust the volume up. And I'll adjust the exposure here. CRTs. I can't get this to focus right. Alright, that's enough of that. So we'll turn it down. Yeah, it is DC bias, unfortunately, with a permanent magnet. You already said, so it's, again, just good enough for dictation. Very noisy. say for handling video games corner to corner perfect convergence razor sharp focus yeah i could see why these transfers are popular but yeah my, my here's the thing a lot of these older tvs work just as work amazingly well and 
people just say, oh, you know, like, you know, when I was talking about things drifting or not working correctly, it's like, oh, yeah, it's just an old TV. That's how they used to work. And that's why I say, bullshit. I mean, come on, the 1955 months, the sharpness on it is amazing. <laughs> IF alignment, but before it looks smeary and everything, it's like, oh yeah, just an old months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't subscribe to that garbage. the end of the tape right there yeah one, one hour and 30 minutes so on that note it'd be a good point to stop the tape now it does not mute the audio and turning the tv off so thanks for watching and uh hit like and subscribe